Robot vacuums are awesome, but they kind of just hang out in the open all day when most of the time no one actually ever sees it do anything. So in this video, I'll show you how I hacked an IKEA mom two drawer chest into a secret lair for my vacuum. By day, this is just a functional piece of furniture that blends in while keeping my tech gadgets out of sight, but charged up and ready to go. At night, however, its secret door opens up, allowing the vacuum to take action. It's essentially the bad cave. My name's Ed, this is 50% Awesome, and I guess I kind of have an affinity towards building things that are multi-purpose, but in disguise. That said, I was still mildly traumatized by my coffee table arcade build, so when looking to hide my robot vacuum, I wasn't looking to build something completely from scratch. So I checked out IKEA and the mom two drawer chest seemed to be just around the right size. I was thinking I'd keep the top drawer intact to use as a charging station rather than a cable storing station, and I could convert the bottom drawer into a door that opens up for the vacuum to come and go when it's time to clean. That's the general idea, but it's all theory until I actually crack it open, so let's get to it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of these drawer rails on the bottom, cause well, I don't need them. So the two key pieces here are this uh, front drawer door that would be for the bottom drawer, as well as this bottom support piece, because this together will make our makeshift door. All right, so here's the cabinet in the space. A couple things that uh, I have to note and I kind of have to deal with. You can see the, the canisters for the self-empty bin get in the way of this top drawer. So I still wanna have a functional drawer. So I'm gonna have to modify that drawer and cut off about like five and a half inches or so. Second issue, because we don't have this bottom support piece connected, there's about like a four millimeter gap on each side on the bottom. Um, whereas if I tried to do the same thing up here, it's quite tight so that actually might work in my favor because there's more clearance for the door to open and close so where this is right now in the living room um, I already have like an IKEA Besta setup you can see I have a two-tone white and wood-ish color finish so to get this guy to match I'm gonna go ahead and vinyl wrap the drawer doors for the wrap I'm just using a roll of vinyl actually meant for my crack head I just cut it to size and suck it on making sure to squeegee out all the air as best I could in the end, I was definitely happy with the result. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut off five and a half inches off these drawers. I'm too lazy to take out my miter saw or any other tools, so I'm just going to try and freehand it with a circular saw. Wish me luck. Right, so now that I got the pieces cut, I'm going to go ahead and transfer the holes that were on the previous piece that's now discarded um, so that I can connect the drawer fronts. So let's do that. Okay, so we got all our pieces cut. We're going to try to put this thing back together and see if everything fits. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Oh, I'm promising. <laughs> nice. Opens and closes just fine and does not get in the way of the empty bin. So definitely digging the way this looks right now. On to the next step. So this bottom area here is where we're going to convert the would-be drawer into a makeshift door. Uh, so it's going to be consisting of two parts. First is this bottom trim here. And then right on top of that would be the drawer door itself. So the trim is going to be recessed a little bit. I 3D printed these little brackets that hopefully will get these things together. There is the door mounted on with these uh, 3D printed brackets that I designed. And it's looking pretty good. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like, this isn't the strongest uh, hold in the world, but I mean, don't really need anything too crazy because it's just gonna be flapping around like that. We got these flip up hinges from Amazon. They have a spring action for, um, I guess, resistance and to kind of keep the door open, but I don't need it. So I've gone ahead and, uh, well, I'll be removing the springs uh, like this so that it's kind of just a nice, smooth, easy action. So to open the door, I got this tiny little actuator also off Amazon. It pushes out a hundred millimeters. So that will cause the door to open. 
So fortunately, my camera ran out of batteries, but that's okay because everything went well with the hinge install. The only thing is that I was hoping the door would close by itself with the force of gravity, but unfortunately, it will require a little bit of assistance uh, coming back fully closed. So that's what the actuator is going to be doing. And because of that, I will have to have some kind of fail safe just in case there's a little finger or a toy or anything that gets stuck in between here while the door is trying to close. So I did some searching and Reddit user Smoke actually did an awesome project where he hid his robot vacuum inside his kitchen cabinets and for the door he had Velcro as a redundancy. So I've always loved using Velcro and it seems like it's going to be the perfect and simple solution to this. So thank you Smoke for coming up with that idea and I'm going to see how that works for me as well. I'm using a piece of hardboard attached to the actuator to have a larger surface area of Velcro stickage. This piece of scrap wood is used as a spacer so the actuator doesn't hit the hinge when it's in use. To smarten up and automate the operation, I'll be using an ESP32 microcontroller board as the brains, which will then be connected to my Home Assistant enabled smart home setup. This two channel relay will then take the instructions from the ESP32, which are essentially open the door or close the door, then take the power from this 12 volt power supply and send it to the actuator so it can, well, open and close the door. If you've tried soldering before but got frustrated thinking that you suck because the solder just didn't want to take no matter what you did, definitely try applying some flux. The flux cleans up the oxidation from the metal surfaces, which in practicality makes it so the solder sticks to where it's supposed to stick. It really does make a huge difference. I ended up 3D printing a case or container, I guess, for the components and use hot glue to secure them. This was then mounted to the back of the drawer where I made the final connections. To power everything, I'm using this surge protector that I'll place in the drawer. The six USB charging ports basically turn the drawer into a makeshift hidden charging station. All that was left from here was to do some cable management, then it was time for testing. And something very unfamiliar happened. Starting to clean. Did one of my projects actually work on the first try? Charging. And with no major setbacks? After getting over the unfamiliar feeling of success, I set up an automation in Home Assistant for the door to open and close in the middle of the night in sync with a vacuum. I'm super happy with how the chest blends in with my space while completely hiding a robot vacuum and a cluttered charging station. Hope you liked that project and if you did, feel free to gently tap that like button below. I know it's been a while since my last project, but I have a bunch of ideas moving forward so feel free to subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.